then Brett just started messing around in his bedroom playing terrible kind of sub folk acoustic rock. The moment that, that Bernard turned up is the, is the moment Swade started to, to be anything. Basically, because he, he just made me and Brett buck up our ideas completely. I mean, one of the first things he said to us was, at, at, at the end of the very first time we met him, was he asked how old we were. And we were both 22, I think. So we both said, oh, 22. And he just said, oh, you better get a move on then. Um, which was... <laughs> This is incredibly cheeky from him, because it's the first time we've ever met him, but it's completely true, because we had up until that point been quite happy to mess around thinking up good names, or thinking what would be on the sleeve or something. I watch the skyline for him to come And when he comes along, we'll be gone We'll go into the city, into the line. We'll be there in the headline, there overnight. The time when I met Brett, it was just, um, I just thought he, he had a great voice and he was nice and he looked good and all that. and and. And the main, the main point was that I knew that I always, I never wanted to be an acoustic guitar player strumming at the back and sort of being happy like that. I always, I always wrote songs from the moment I learned how to, from the moment I learned how to put two chords together. That's the first time I wrote a song, and so I'd always wanted to be a songwriter. This is the big time. This is the way. Now he's in the big time. And the final piece in the jigsaw appeared when we met Simon, who's a friend of a friend who used to sell tickets down at Yulee, where we'd go and see gigs. And we'd tried loads of drummers before, because we wanted a, a real drummer, um, but no one had fitted in at all. And again, with Simon, it's exactly the same as with Bernard. Within, like, 15 seconds of him playing, we, we all just knew he was completely right. <laughs> It's always been my ambition to be a musician, pop star, whatever, you know, always, since I was four. I can't tell you how this is my 13th band, but uh, all the bands I've been in before, uh, they just weren't. This is the first band I've ever played with that, that I've felt completely 100% into. I sometimes think, oh, it's so mundane and boring and average living in Devon. I can't wait to get away and do something a bit more positive, a bit different with my life, which is what Suede have introduced to me. They're not um, famous in an American film star way. You know, they've made it for themselves through their music. I don't think, you know, they were brought into a glamorous world, but they're definitely... I think it was so unglamorous for them that they've made the glamour. Suede have affected Molly's life quite positively. You know, she's 
taken on quite a lot of their statements and it's it's perfect because they open up so many topics of conversation for us. Somehow we've actually got closer, Molly and myself, through this, you know, and it's, it's not just a crazy obsession with um, a band, it's, it's, they're more than that somehow, they're, they're saying something about society today. Hello. 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 You're up. Hi, mate. How are you? Got dirty hands. Oh yeah, Molly had to sing. Um, was it the next life in RE to a whole RE group? Yeah. Do it then. Yeah. Yeah. In front. And I, I, I sang on piano. Yeah. She got, she got her homework, so Mr. Roberts, our teacher, said you have to sing a Swade song. I thought I'd chase the next life. When you sang it in front of the class? Yeah. Well, it was only yeah. seven. <laughs> did, you have to do, did you do it all when, with a full set of it? Yeah, I had to do everything. Although I stopped on the high bit. <laughs> Mr. Roberts sounds like. <laughs> when I really feel quite inspired to write, quite a lot of sadness, quite a lot, a lot of feeling of, of dislocation. And at the same time, uh, um, uh, the, the opposite end of the scale quite inspires me. Um, kind of like a, a really kind of um, sort of searing, um, almost violent side to life really, really inspires me. I like you. You're a white-tasted geezer. You're my mate. Yeah. Come on, someone. We're one of the lads. Whenever I write, write about people in dislocated situations, whether they're isolated, sort of, you know, in the in in the in where they live or what they look like or how they think, I always want it to be quite inspiring to the people that it's aimed at. And people always think of the traditional sort of view of of heroic people is of either is of kind of like sort of someone in the ghetto or something like that, and of course they're heroic as well, but. People never really talk about uh, some sort of housewife in North London, you know. And I decided to write a song about it, so I wrote Sleeping Pills about it. Which is just about, I don't know, the sort of drama of the everyday, I suppose. <laughs> You don't need 